Hey kids, John here. I was asked to talk about marching band. Actually, an interesting topic. I think there's a lot to discuss here. I'm going to expand marching band out a little bit more broad. Because as trumpet players, I think we, almost all of us, will find ourselves in some kind of situation where we are playing instrumental music and we're in motion. Okay, so that's my greater definition of marching band. Whether it's a field show that you're doing with a drum and bugle corps or an actual marching band, or if it's a street parade, it's a military band doing a, a military change of command ceremony, or it's a brass band that's uh, playing New Orleans style brass band music moving down the street, or even some type of band that works at a theme park but it's, you know, outdoors and you're playing music and you've got motion involved. Anytime we're moving and playing music, this adds uh, another dimension to what we have to do. Let's look at the music first. If you have to memorize your music, get it memorized. Get it done. Get it memorized and understand musically what you're supposed to be doing. This is music, even though it's marching band, it's still music. So we want to be able to play musically and that means dynamics accents, all the markings in it that create the emotion of music. We want to make sure we're still playing that. And so when you're memorizing music, do your best to memorize what it, what it is, the whole feel of it. I have, um, I have a video on memorizing music, so you may check that out. That might help. So learn the music. And then if you're looking at a relatively complex show or choreography, Learn the choreography. And what's going to happen is you're going to need to be able to devote, you know, part of your brain to each thing when you're doing it. So if you have it internalized, practicing the moves after you have the music memorized or practicing the moves and thinking about what comes next. So you're comfortable doing that aspect as well. I think it's very important to have the music come off as music and the show give the visual aspect that, that really excites the audience and makes the whole presentation great. So, music, choreography, put them together. The uh, other thing that can happen is if, if the music's difficult, okay? Let's look at how we overcome that. I have a great video on uh, working on etudes and difficult passages is the name of the... Uh, is the video, working on etudes and difficult passages. There's some information in there that may actually help you look at how to learn some difficult music if you happen to have some very difficult passages to play. It'll help you break them down, you get them learned, then you get them memorized if you need to. Um, one of the things that's interesting about, say, doing a field show or something with a lot of choreography, you may be in a week-long series of rehearsals, or maybe it's two weeks, or you're out for an entire summer. Whatever the case may be, when you first enter into these rehearsals, chances are they may be all-day rehearsals, where you have three hours in the morning, a lunch break, and then three hours in the afternoon. Half of this time is probably going to be split up learning the show, the choreography, and the other half of this time is learning the music. So you're looking at a three-hour block of playing your instrument. Here's where things get interesting. If you haven't been practicing for three hours a day, when you come into this rehearsal and have to play for three hours a day, that may be challenging. And the mistake that we tend to make, all of us, is we, I'm going to, I'm going to be there, I'm going to do it all, I'm going to play every note, I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that I'm giving my all. Well, you're going to give your all for the first two or three days, and then your all's going to be gone, and your chops are going to be gone, and you're going to be useless. You're just now a body moving around, you know, doing what you're supposed to do. Okay. I see this all the time. I have a video on overdoing it. I suggest checking out that video. It may help you with some conceptual things as how to approach at least getting into these rehearsals. One of the things I advocate is don't leave your performance in the rehearsal. Okay, 
had an opportunity to work with some great players throughout my life. And one of the best teaching moments I've learned from so many people, even without them telling me anything, they just showed me what they did. I worked with a great Chuck Finley. I have nothing but respect for this player. I think he's one of the most amazing trumpet players out there. He's a chameleon. He can do it all. Okay. We were backing up several artists. He was one of them. He came into the rehearsal, and this is while he was still doing the Tonight Show. So we were in this morning, late morning rehearsal. He comes in. He, he kind of, you know, is almost looks half asleep. He's just, you know, he's so he's so not excited to be there. Okay, he's not excited to be there. He's just there. We go through the rehearsal. It's just very dry. You know, this is what I'm going to do. Okay, let's run that. All right, great. Okay, very good. Thank you so much. I'll see you at the gig. He leaves, okay? Well, he had to play that night. And he may not have known exactly what he had to play that night. Okay? So he didn't waste himself in the rehearsal. He played his gig. When he played the gig with us, he was amazing. He was amazing. My God. What, a, what, a, what an amazing player Chuck Minley is. But I learned that lesson. That lesson is, man, don't... You know, if you know you have several things throughout the day that you've got to do, don't waste it in the first thing you're doing, okay? So in those rehearsals, relax, relax. You know, some of the passages, let them go. How many of you are there playing the line, okay? Or just play it softer. You don't have to give your all in the first day of rehearsal. Going into rehearsal, take it easy. Be smart about what you're doing. Range is another thing that can happen here in the marching band idiom. We're playing loud, okay? We're playing loud typically because we're outside, it's just us, there's no amplification, we're trying to fill up an area that's open air, whether it's a stadium or just a street, okay? So we're typically playing loud. Not only maybe we're playing louder than we normally play, we're also maybe being challenged to play higher than we normally play. This is where we have to be careful. Never hurt yourself trying to play high. Never hurt yourself trying to play high, okay? I have a whole series of uh, videos on range. If you check out my channel, you can look at playlists and see a whole bunch of things organized that way, but there are a host of videos on range, developing them, uh, developing range, how to, how to approach it, different aspects of maybe the uh, things you can do to help you get it get it correct and focused and right. When we're playing in the upper register, we don't want it to be... We don't want it to sound like a bunch of cats fighting, okay? We want it to sound like music. And if you don't have a command of that upper register, you're not going to get it by just trying to throw it out there in rehearsal, and then throw it out there on the gig. You've got to work your chops and develop range and register. Okay, Marching band can be, I think, very fun. I, I've, I've, <laughs> I've been involved in a host of different types of marching band, and it can be fun. Okay, One of the great things that comes out of being in a marching band type situation is when you do have that show, when you do put on that show and you finish that show and you're like, wow, that was so fun. We did a great job. Band sounded great. Band looked great. You've learned several things. One is that there is, there, there is something greater than just yourself. There's a community. You've learned a sense of community. You've learned a sense of community pride. This is called team building. You've become part of a team. You understand what it takes to make a team come together. It takes commitment from everybody on the team to do this okay I think that that's huge again it's it's fun you, you you get to have this hang with a bunch of people and a lot of times you're taking trips you're going places you're seeing things you wouldn't have normally seen because you're part of this group this is music in general music takes us all over the world it's fantastic I love music because of this aspect sense of community and all the places and people we get to meet. It's, it's just incredible. Learn your music. Learn your choreography. Don't overdo it. Don't overplay. Play very musical. Play music. This is still music, okay? It's still music. And 
just playing as loud as you can, that's not music. Play with great dynamics, play with musicality, uh, you know, have a great time doing it. Don't hurt yourself trying to play in the high register. Bad idea. Develop your chops, develop your approach to playing, and be careful while you're moving around because you can get hurt that way too. You can actually physically get hurt. So do this smart and you'll have a great time. I promise. Hope all of this helps. Take it easy, kids.